Hi, I'm Kubis van Rensburg. Join me now for Capturing Glory. We're going to go into the Word of God. It's time for the church to come out of the closet and become visible. You are the city, you are set on a hill, you are the light of the world. Bible says this is God's holy word, inspired by the Holy Spirit, as holy men of old spoke, anointed of God. Kubis is anointed to teach, I'm anointed to hear, and we believe revelation to break through right now, in Jesus' name. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Maybe we should just do one or two verses at a time, okay? There's no condemnation. So we, we're just going to go slow, and I trust God as we go on, that fresh stuff is going to, no condemnation, okay? If you are in Christ Jesus and walk not after the flesh. Now, this is not a Pentecostal message to tell people not to sin. This is not what it means. Not after the flesh, Okay, for the law. Of the spirit of life. Okay, which is in Christ Jesus has freed me from the law of sin and death. Okay, so if there's no condemnation I mean, condemnation puts you in a place of you are judged and then you are condemned. Condemned to death. Okay, so you, according to the law, you are judged because of the sin that you did because the law says you're a sinner because that's the power of sin is in the law. So the law comes and judge you. Then you get condemnation and you are condemned to death because that's what the law do. But if I'm out of condemnation, it means I'm now free and there's now no condemnation. So then it means, not after the flesh, then it means that must be the law of sin and death. Then it means after the spirit must be the law. So the flesh then is the law. Of sin and death, otherwise it will not because he repeats it. He repeats it in verse 3. He says, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Okay, so the law is the flesh. And it was weak through the flesh. (laughs) You all know what you of course is. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and sin condemned sin. So sin was condemned. Hmm? So that the righteousness of the law, let's do, let's do that first. Let's go to Acts 13 quickly. Acts 13. Okay. Now verse 3 says, for what the law could not do. I could, okay, I don't have to read Bible. I can come stand there and just talk to you. 
Okay, all this stuff is my, is my life. So, but I thought if we maybe just do Romans and just do verse by verse that you can all see it and make notes and imagine where we're going to be after an hour from now. Yeah. Or I can just stand up and preach to you all the same stuff. But if you read it, you can see it and hear it and speak in your mic. Right, Acts chapter 13. Mm. Acts 13 talk about they preaching and they say Jesus is crucified. Verse 30, but God raised him from the dead. Mm-hmm. Verse 35, wherefore he saith also in another psalm, thou shalt not suffer thy holy one to see corruption. I hope you're in the messages of this week, okay? I'm gonna start going faster. For David, after he had served his generation by the will of God, fell asleep. The guy died and was laid with his fathers and he saw corruption. But he, whom God raised again, saw no corruption. So where are we heading to? Resurrection life. Verse 38, be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. I mentioned it two years ago at the Conference of Grace and said, it's not, con- it's not conviction of sin, it's forgiveness of sin. Yes, yes. Through this man is not preached unto you conviction of sin, forgiveness of sin. And by him, all that believe, here it comes, are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Okay, so if we go back to Romans 8, keep your finger there, Romans 8, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Walk not after the flesh, now we've already discussed from the first three verses, flesh is law, but after the spirit, which is life. For the law, which condemn you, no, no, the law is set you free, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So what does the law bring you? It makes you understand that you're a sinner and it's gonna make you die. Because the law that's engraven on tables of stone is death. So I could not be justified from sin and I could not be therefore justified from death. So all that's under the law must eventually die because the law can't justify you from death. But now through the preaching of the forgiveness of sin that put you in a place of no condemnation, you are justified from all things that the law of Moses could not justify you. So you are justified like you have never sinned, but then you are also justified that you're never gonna die. (laughs) Verse 40, beware therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold you despisers. Listen to the words. And wonder and perish. Okay, you can groan if you can't say anything. So there's people that's not gonna listen to what I'm gonna read now. God calls them despisers and they gonna wonder and after they wonder, they're gonna perish. Is that true? Okay, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but they have everlasting life. Come on, you must say amen. God so loved the world that he gave. He's only begotten that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So there's the perishing or there's the everlasting life. Okay, there's the everlasting life. He says, these people are the despisers. and eventually they will perish. So I'm gonna work work in your days, and when people hear it, they're gonna despise what you're gonna say, they're gonna wonder about what you're gonna say, and they're gonna perish because they're not gonna believe what you say. 
uh, this is all that I want to say. You can now be justified from everything that the law of Moses could not justify you. And this is the work I'm going to do in your day. Hmm? A work which you shall in no wise believe. Could you underline, underline no wise people would believe it? Though a man declare it unto you. So this is the hardest thing that will be there for people to believe. No matter who's preaching it, this is going to be the toughest thing to believe. Now you've heard it, but make like you've never heard it. So let's pick up the prophet. Habakkuk chapter 1. I know it, Kubis, I know it. I don't, that's why I'm preaching it. I want to know more. This is for you to make notes tonight. So no matter how many times you heard it, you, you make marks in your Bible and put it directly because we're going to do it slowly, Romans 8, and I trust God to do a great thing. Hmm? Verse 5, here's the prophet. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. Hmm? Now you can read the rest, but here it comes because we've got to pick up the context according to Romans 8 and Acts chapter 13, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Verse 12, art thou not from everlasting? Yeah. O Lord, my God, my Holy One, and we shall not die. So Isaiah 32, we got to find scriptures that's got another scripture that will form a mate to that scripture, and then prophecy will be fulfilled. So God says, years before it happened, I'm going to work a work in your days, and when somebody start talking about this work, people will definitely not believe it. So Paul picks it up and he says, listen, man. Jesus saw no corruption, so he's getting our attention. So if we got the attention on no corruption, now I'm going to speak on. Now through him, <laughs> spirit of hearing, because he saw no corruption, that's my key word. I'm going to now talk to you. Through him that saw no corruption, I now preach unto you forgiveness of sin. And this is what forgiveness of sin means. You can now be justified from all things that the law of Moses could not justify you. But it is written, you despisers and mockers, marvel because I'm going to do a work in your days that even if somebody come and tell it to you, you will not believe it. So what is this work? Point number one, oh God, you are from everlasting, no corruption. So if you now preach to us that we are justified, then we shall not die. Because the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law. What does the law do? It tells you this is what you do. So the law says you are a sinner. Point number two, because you're a sinner, you must die. So I'm free from sin and death. But we know it, Kubis. But that's why somebody's got to preach it. Okay? Romans 8. So it's made, I don't have to go too deep into stuff. You know that flesh is the lawyer. So if you go to Galatians as well, a lot of scriptures talking about the flesh actually talks about the law. I think E.W. Kenyon used to say that too. Okay? Verse 4. Now here it comes. So that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Just turn two pages on to Romans 10. So if I take this portion, then the righteousness of the law would be fulfilled in me because I don't walk after the law. Verse three says, people are ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law. For righteousness to everyone that believeth. (laughs) If we can get it through. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Okay, let's read it. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. <laughs> okay, it's still not coming. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us to believe, for Christ is the end of the law of righteousness, or for righteousness, to everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith, speaketh on this wise say not in the heart who shall ascend to heaven that is to bring Christ down from above who shall descend into the deep that is to bring Christ up bring up Christ again from the dead but what saith that the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith we preach that if we if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe thy heart that God raised him from the dead you shall be saved Saved from what? From sin and death. That's the context. So if I confess, so this is again quoted from Deuteronomy 30. Kubis, you said it. No, I didn't. I'm saying it for the first time. Okay. Deuteronomy 30 says, I bring you today life and death. I bring you cursing and blessing. Choose you this day. But this commandment is not a difficult one. You don't have to go anywhere to get it. It's in your mouth and your heart. You gotta speak it because he is your very life. So no matter how much we preach the stuff, we got to start saying it. That's why I'm saying it over and over again. And we're going through Romans 8 tonight. You got to start speaking life. You got to start saying it. You got to not speak death. You got to not speak the law. You got to not say the wrong stuff. You got to say the right stuff. You got to speak truth. You got to speak. Jesus, confess him, confess righteousness, confess life. I am free from the law of sin and death. You gotta say it. I have been set free from the law of sin and death. I've got the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation. I've got forgiveness of sin. I'm justified from everything that the law of Moses could not justify me. The righteousness of the law is fulfilled in me. I've been baptized, so all righteousness have been fulfilled. I died in Christ. I'm dead to the law. I'm risen in Christ. I'm alive in Christ. I cannot die. I shall live. Mm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Let's just do Second Corinthians 3 quickly. We touched, touched on it this week, but we never really did it. Second Corinthians chapter three. Holy God. Mm-hmm. Now remember, verse one through three plus 
Acts chapter 13, verse 37, 38, 39, 41. You know, let's put it in here. The law, the flesh, death, versus life, spirit, hmm? Christ Jesus. He said he has made us, verse 6, able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Now just listen to it. Jesus says something to this effect in John chapter 6, verse 63. He says, the flesh profiteth nothing. It's the Spirit that quickeneth. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So Jesus says, what is written on stones profit you nothing. We must see the context. Jesus is challenged on the law. How do I know that? They said, Moses gave us bread from heaven. Jesus said, uh, 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 uh. Moses did not give you. My father gives you the true bread from heaven. They said, no, Moses. He said, uh, 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 no, 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 I. They said, no, Moses says in the law. He said, uh, 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 I am the true bread that comes down from heaven. Moses said, man shall not live by bread, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So here's the word that proceedeth from God. So shall my word be that I send forth. It shall do what I send forth, it shall be prophesied. He said, that flesh, what is he referring to? Moses, the law. The flesh profiteth you nothing. Why? It brings you death. But the spirit, here am I. The same spirit that I've got on me is going to raise me from the dead. And if that spirit now dwells in you, he's going to quicken your mortal body. It's the spirit that quickeneth. And if that spirit quickeneth you, he shall, <laughs> that same spirit that dwells in you, he's going to quicken your mortal body. <laughs> so the spirit quickeneth. He says, I'm going to help you beforehand. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. So you got to connect what's in the spirit man to your tongue. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. You got to speak it. You got to speak life. Don't speak law. Don't speak sin. Don't speak death. Don't speak darkness. Don't speak negative. Don't speak the wrong thing. Say the right stuff. Forget about, you know, I said earlier, forget about all the other people, man. I really think it's time. Forget about the people that say stuff about you and us. Don't mention it. It's death. They don't speak life to us. Why must we repeat the death they speak to us? Let's make a quality decision. That's not what I'm going to speak about. I'm going to speak about, look at all the people for us. Jesus said, if they're not against you, they are for you. So there's how many billion people on the face of the earth that don't know me? So they're all for me. Yes. I say it to God, eternal Father, every person that can pray somewhere in the spirit now, help them to intercede for me because they don't know me. And if they don't know me, that means they are for me. Because they can't be against me, they don't know me. So if they pray in the Spirit, they don't know rightly what to pray for. So the Holy Spirit will come to their aid because I asked. So I've got intercessors all across the earth praying for me. That's stuff that I just decided. That's what the Bible says. We're going to come to it later on. The, Jesus said, if they're not against you, they are for you. Oh Lord, we have found some people that are casting out devils in your name. Should we go stop them? Jesus said, listen, if they're not against us, they are for us. Have you ever thought of that? No. 
Thank you, Peter. So going through this city, I mean, there's a lot of people that know me, the religious ones. But the sinners don't. And there's many Christians that don't care. They got their church. I got my church. Huh? Just in the close area, there's 65 Christian churches. Only one mosque. <laughs> you don't even get that stupid. <laughs> huh? In the close vicinity of the mosque, there's 65 Christian churches. Oh, they all dissected and diverted. They all love Jesus. Amen. They think they're right. They read the same Bible, so they write. In a sense. But I mean... <laughs> and many of them hasn't got a clue to say anything about me. They just don't care. They have their church on Sunday. They don't care about us, so they're for us. The words that I speak unto you, so. so Jesus said long before the time, get your spirit connected to your tongue. Say the right stuff. Forget about the clomquasta that he rond loop and plek a probia paint. Come on, make a decision tonight out of my vocabulary. Come on, make a decision. Kelly Varner, when he preached by us the first time in 1998, said, why would you allow people to stay rent-free in your mind? They don't pay you for repeating what they said. Why do you think about them? You know what they say about me now? I know there's no curse words for the Christians, but let them go. <laughs> hmm? Why should we mention it? Hmm? If we just speak good news, if we just say the right stuff, what type of life spirit is going to be all around us? If we just speak life, Sorry if I spend some time here, but maybe God is trying to stress a point. We get so quickly, we hear the bad news. Hmm? They're going to say it in any case. Yeah. Absa Bank years ago had an advert before they changed their name. Said, they will speak. They will speak bad, they will speak good. That means they speak. Because they speak, it means they know we are here on the corner of so-and-so street. Let them speak. <laughs> hmm? And I think this is where I got the revelation. I told you before, I stood in the bank one day and the preacher was standing before me, and you know, and I came in and I had to see him. And I said, How's it? You know? He said, And he turned around and he said, How are you, man? I said, Great, we're really in revival. He said, Are you not fed up of all the things that people say about you? I said, What do they say about you? <laughs> it's a true story. And he said, Nothing. I said, Sure sign. Nothing's happening either. You don't really talk long about the dead. Maybe the first few weeks and then you never talk about them again. Thank you. Okay. So let's talk about the living stuff. Okay. So the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Oh, we got to hurry if we, we're only in verse four, man. But if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones, tombstones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For the, if the ministration, here it comes, of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. 
For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away. Come on, I, I, I don't know if you're knowing where I'm going, but I'm trying to prove to you that that thing is done away. Okay, if you don't get it up till now. That which is done away was glorious much more. That which remain is glorious. So what remain? The law of the spirit of life remain. What is done away? The law of sin and death is done away. Why is it then still operating? Because of tongues. Sorry, but there's the written law that we heard over and over. I grew up in a church where Sunday after Sunday, they read that thing and the veil is there. We now read again the law of the Lord. I am the Lord your God and this is my law. And then we all sang, I am a sinner. <laughs> Joking, no joke. So we keep on saying it so every week we bury the people. Because we kill them. Week after week, we had to listen to the reading of the law. They say it. We're going to now listen to the reading of the law. And we wrote a song to sing to the law. I am a sinner, please forgive me my sin. So we never reach righteousness. But the same church believes that we are elected. Yeah, their basic doctrine is we are elected. But we are sinners. So we listen and listen to this. He says, it's done away. Hmm? But seeing that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. So somewhere somebody's got to use plainness of speech and say, sorry, I don't accept it. I got saved on a Tuesday night in a little Pentecostal church. I got saved when I was small, but later on. And I went back to my home church the Sunday morning. And I stood up when they read the law. Nobody said anything to me. And I put up my hand and I said, excuse me, Reverend, can I say something? I went with all my cousins in Benoni to the church. I said, can I say something? And I said, I got saved on Tuesday night. I said, but what we read right now puts me back into condemnation. And I want to say, for years I've been in this church, and the older I get, the worse I became. Because I always heard that I'm just a sinner. I said, but Tuesday night, I got saved. It got so quiet. And he said, maybe we should get more of these type of testimonies in church. And just like that, he turned into another man. He just said it. I can remember it so clearly. He just, he said, but there's nothing wrong with the church. <laughs> I didn't say there's anything wrong with the church. Okay, okay, don't worry. worry. We can't read the law. We can't speak death to people. We can't, okay, I'm not hitting a church now. I'm just saying this is what's happening all over, not just in that church. Brother, I went to a Pentecostal church after I got saved. They're more legalistic than that church. They got a thicker law book. Because when I came to that church, the first thing they said to me at the door is, I must go cut my hair. The very first thing that the pastor said to me, thank you for coming to the church, but we've got a lot of young people here, and you need to go cut your hair because you're not an example to young people. I thought, that, what's that got to do with Christianity? And then the next thing, I had to change my clothes. And the third thing, I had to sell my motorbike. Yeah. And it was only a 380 Yamaha. I 
I mean, I had black high heel shoes, Askanti Bess, on Oyitani Bess. I came to their prayer meeting and there was another lady and she said, the demons are in this place tonight. <laughs> And she said, I can feel demons here. And I'm sitting there with my long hair, my high heel shoes in the hippie days. I thought, wait a minute, I get my guitar there, man. And we were singing, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're a temple. No, you're not. And this woman is just watching my shoes. And I'm so innocent, I don't know. And she went there to them and she said, it's his shoes. It's the shoes. They came to me and said, you know, if this woman feel that, you know, there's demons in your shoes. It was my hair, then it was my motorbike, then it was my shoes. Oh, oh. How are we going to ever be justified? Maybe God is trying to say something in between the lines to us. Maybe we're keeping ourselves up with little petty things that's hindering the flow of life to come into our very beings. Get rid of the law stuff that we're clinging to and realize that this man has brought us justification from all that the law of Moses couldn't justify us. There is no condemnation. Brother, I'm going to work a work in your days. If someone come tell it to you, it will be difficult to believe. What will be difficult to believe? That you are totally justified and therefore you can't die. But the do's and don'ts kill you, man. Hmm? Honest, how many of you go lie at night time and you got total peace, there's nothing? Oh, uh, uh, why did I do that today? How many things do you repent from over and over? Or how many things do you point your finger at the other partner over and over? Or do you think justification is totally... So I'm free, but so is the other person free too. Yeah. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like you. Hmm? Hmm? If the devil don't remind us, we're going to remind each other. Huh? The devil can't speak to you because John 10 says, I don't know the voice of a stranger. So how can the devil say anything to you? He can't talk to you. We only know the voice of the shepherd. We don't know the voice of the devil. So the devil can't say to me, look what you've done. He says, he says, verse 14, but their minds, oh my goodness, I think that's where we were. Wasn't Romans 8, was that where we were when we got sidetracked to 2 Corinthians? Hmm? Yes, verse 6, verse 5. For they that after the flesh mind the things of the flesh. But they that are of the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. He says, but their minds are blinded. How? For until this day, hmm? remain the same veil and take away in the reading of the Old Testament, which is law, which is flesh. Hmm? When Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Look at chapter 4. Mm. Verse 3. But if our gospel is hid, is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Who is the God of this world? The Lord. Not Satan. Okay, back to chapter 3. For those who didn't see it. Hmm? 
but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil is taken away in the reading of the Old Testament. So who's the God of this world? The written red law. So people bow before their God Sunday after Sunday. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Mm, oh Lord, oh Lord. Mm, how do I know it? Go to the wailing wall. Serious, what do they bow to? The law. Mm, mm, mm. And now the Christians, you see it on Christian television, now they pray the same way. We have these hour night prayer meetings on Christian television. Where did they get that? From the Jews. What do the Jews do when they do that? They bow before the law. Not a lot of amens now because we want to compromise. No, we don't want to compromise. Because to be carnally minded is death. To be fleshly minded is death. If I go back to the law, it's death. But to be spiritually minded. So he says, if I turn to the spirit, the veil is taken away. Hmm? Because the spirit gives life. Now where the spirit is, verse 17, there is liberty. Liberty. <laughs> liberty. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hey, liberty. Uh, verse 6. <laughs> Chapter 8. I don't know where I am now. If it's not making sense to you, somewhere in between something's going to come out. I, I'm going to enjoy myself. <laughs> For to be, this is how I work out sermons. Like I'm sitting here with you tonight. I'm sitting with a pen and I just read, read, write, read, write, write. I've got no notes. I've got no nothing. But this is how I preach and then it becomes a sermon. So who knows what sermon we get tonight. So maybe I'll have a sermon for Sunday after tonight. Oh, you heard it already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to be kindly minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life. And peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the carnal mind is enmity to, be God, to, to God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Put it back to the context. They that read the law that was written cannot please God. You got to make a decision who you gonna please, the flesh or God, Moses or Christ, death or life, blessing or cursing. You got to make a decision. It's not difficult. Choose. Choose. You gotta choose. Amen. Thank you, Johnson. Let's just do Colossians 1 and Matthew 16 quickly. On that scriptures that we just did. We just read, for to be kindly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Those that want to Please the flesh, cannot please God. So let's do two scriptures in that fashion. Now remember, Jesus Christ paid the price to take us out of the one and put us into the other. Hmm? Verse 21. Matthew 16. From that time forth, I mean, Jesus just asked them, who am I? And they say, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah. But who do you say? Peter said, verse 16, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Ooh, Peter, 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 man, you rocky. You just got a revelation. I'm going to call you rocky. On this rock, I'll build my church. Rocky. One, two, three, four, and five at the same time. Rock him. We will, we will rock. Yeah. Okay, so. Verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus, where am I? 
did to show unto his disciples how we must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from you, Lord. I mean, I just got the rocky revelation. Now you want to rock us out of the boat here. What is this? But Jesus turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offense unto me. Hmm? Amplified. You are in my way. You are an offense and a hindrance and a snare to me. For you are minding what partakes not of the nature and quality of God, but of men. Ooh. Liebe Jesus, sag en teer, sien op my ee kinkie neer, leer my om tot ee te bid, neem my haarkie en bid. Wat maak, I mean, what, where am I now? What makes that all of a sudden you are qualified as the devil? Because of your mind. So there's the God of this world that works according to the law that minds the thing of this world and God says, oh my goodness. Colossians 1, I'm too scared to say it out loud. Hmm? Colossians chapter 1, listen to this one. I'm getting there. Now remember Romans 8 says, you know, if you mind spiritual stuff, it's your life and your peace. If you mind carnal thing, it's death and stuff like that. Hmm? Verse 21. And you were sometimes alienated. Everybody's looking for the aliens. <laughs> and enemies. Everybody's looking for enemy. In your minds. <laughs> By wicked works have they now reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death. To present you holy. Ha ha, unblameable, ha ha, unreprovable, ha ha, in his sight. Verse 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile you, man, to himself. We thank you, Jesus. Back to Romans 8. Is it making sense somehow? Mm. Where were we? Verse 9. But you are not in the flesh. But in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, for if you after the flesh, for if you after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Hmm? So resurrection power. We did it over and over again this week. So let's read it. We quoted it, but let's do Ephesians 1. We'll come back to that mortification of the flesh in a minute. For I always pray to God, verse 17, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, wasn't last night awesome, so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saint he set apart so that you can know 
and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of His power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of His mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his own right hand in the heavenly places. I want you to know, you must know this is the power that is in you, that is working for you. For if the same spirit that raised him from the dead is now in you, he's going to quicken your mortal body. So if mortality is quickened, it must become immortality. But I got to sack the flesh. Say it out loud. I serve notice on the God of this world which is the written law that will not dictate me into understanding the works of the flesh. But I turn to the Lord who is spirit and I call him Lord. I submit to you, O Spirit. Mm. Listen, that's the next verse. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So what is creation waiting for? Sons of God. So who are they that are led by the Spirit? Who are they? Those that totally get away from the flesh, the law, which is death, and totally go for the spirit. And if I turn to the spirit, 2 Corinthians 3 says, then am I changed from glory to glory into the very image of the Son of God, Christ. Then I am because I'm led by the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. What type of liberty? That I know I'm justified. There's no bondage. And we come into that in the next verse, verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Okay? You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him, that the, the power of death, that is the devil, here is Romans 8.15, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For you... Romans 8, 15. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. The law of the spirit of life, which in Christ had made me free from the law of sin and death. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. He delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage because he destroyed him that the power of death through death that is the devil to deliver them who their lifetime long were subject to bondage because of fear of death. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You've been delivered. Exactly the same words. Hmm? But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit now itself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. We quoted it earlier on, but let's quote it again. As long as the air remains a child. He differs nothing from a slave. The elder son in the prodigal's house. As long as the heir is a child, he differs nothing from a slave. 
I have served you all my life and you never gave me a little goat. The elder son. My son, all that I have is yours. But because you mind the flesh servanthood of a slave, you never got anything. But this my son declared, I will go to my father and I will say to my father, Father, I have sinned because in my father's house the servants have more than enough and to spare. So I will say, Father. So his mentality was always, Father. So the father said, Son. Amen. 